Welcome to a new supplemental, folks. This is my more loosely scripted show, and the past few of these have been a bit on the controversial side, so I decided to go for something much more nerdy and specific and something which doesn't really matter. Today we are ranking the various designs of the USS Enterprise, or rather, I'm ranking them, and you'll be telling me in the comments why I'm wrong. There are a total of 11 designs I'll be getting through, so starting from worst to best, here we go. At number 11, it's the Enterprise J. This is the only design that's on this list which I just hate. I think this ship just looks horrible. I just think nothing about it works. I like the concept behind the ship. You know, from what I'm, I've read up on it, uh, it's got like uh, its own Starfleet. Like, this thing's massive, and the idea that it's got like its own Starfleet Academy, it's basically like its own mobile colony, so to speak, and it kind of goes off and explores other galaxies and stuff. I think that sounds really cool, but just the actual design I just think is terrible. Um, it's like incredibly large, but it seems super fragile, you know, the design doesn't convey its size at all. Uh, just like the sort of how thin a lot of the kind of struts are and stuff, and how thin the saucer looks. It just looks like it's kind of gonna break as soon as uh, someone touches it or handles it a bit roughly, and it's just, it just doesn't convey its size or its power at all. All of the shapes are really weird and distorted. I don't like that it's all just kind of, it's just kind of very basic saucer with nacelles stuck to it. I think you could, be, could do something a lot more interesting uh, with a design like this or with an idea like this. I think you could easily make a future enterprise which is a lot more aesthetically pleasing and just a lot cooler looking. This ship to me is just very ugly and weird and I hate it. At number 10, it's the Kelvin Enterprise A. So this is the one that's seen at the very, very end of uh, Star Trek Beyond. Um, there are bits of this I like. For the most part, I really like the saucer section and uh, the way it joins to the uh, drive section, the drive section itself. But uh, what I, the issue I have with this design is that it's just got a really ugly bum. Um, <laughs> the shuttle bay, for example, has sort of been reduced to like a tiny little window, like this tiny little thing. I don't know how shuttles launch from there at all, or even if that's supposed to be a shuttle bay anymore, but that, that just looks really odd to me. And also, the way the pylons uh, join to the very, very ends of the nacelles, like they join to the nacelles at the point right before the kind of the bulge at the front, uh, which I just think looks really weird. I think from far away it looks, it looks nice, but um, up close, I just don't like about half of this ship design, and so that's why, for me, it's quite near the bottom of this list. Although I don't, I don't hate it nearly as rem I don't hate it remotely as much as I do the Enterprise J. But yeah, this one I was a little bit disappointed by when uh, I saw it at the end of Beyond. Uh, number nine, it's the NX01 Enterprise from Enterprise, and um, I actually quite like this one, even though it's uh, near the bottom of the pile. I I do quite like it in general. I like most of uh, the Enterprise Enterprise's uh, production design um, in terms of the overall show. I think it's got a really nice uh, aesthetic to it, and I'll talk more about that in um, some future videos. Um, it looks cool, but I think it's just not as beautiful as some other designs. Um, again, I just think it's quite simplistic of saucer section and nacelles, although I think it works for this era, considering this is like a less advanced thing, and this is like, you know, kind of the first big... Uh, starship that Earth has built, which is kind of supposed to compete with the Vulcan designs and the Andorian designs and so on and so forth. And, and for that purpose, I think it looks really good. And you can kind of see how the more classic Enterprise designs sort of spring out of this. So for that, I quite like it, but I just don't think it's it's just not as beautiful or as aesthetically pleasing or cool looking as some later designs. Um, the YouTube channel EC Henry did a really good sort of streamlined version of this, um, which he did for uh, the fan uh, production that he did, uh, Pacific 201, which has some really, really nice ship designs in it. I really like his version of the NX-01. Um, for this one, in my mind, it's just, it's a good design. I like it overall, but uh, it's just not one of the great ones. Next up at number eight, it's the Enterprise E. Um, I've mentioned before that I'm not a huge fan of the Sovereign class. In general, I'm not a big fan of the sort of squished look that a lot of Starfleet ships took on in sort of the late 24th century era. Um, you know, one of the thing, one of the reasons I love uh, the kind of the Constitution class is I love the idea of it being like a tall ship, like a sailing ship. You know, I think 
you know, without going full treasure planet, Matt Jeffries kind of absolutely nailed the idea of a kind of a tall ship of the stars. You know, and uh, for me, the Enterprise E and a lot of other things like Voyager and the uh, Prometheus class, which is just a whole other thing, um, just kind of all squishing it together and having the saucer kind of be a part of the the drive section almost, kind of flow directly into it and have the nacelles sort of spring out from there. Um, I don't know. It just just to me, it's just not as good looking. I think it does. It's not that pleasing to the eyes. Um, it looks really cool in some angles, like from the top and and things, but. Um, from others, it looks very, very odd. Like, from the front of the ship, um, the fact that it's so squished down that the torpedo bay needs to be this kind of sort of wart that's stuck underneath the saucer section, and the saucer section itself kind of takes on, like, a, a very mound-looking shape. Um, yeah, it, it strikes me as kind of strange, and a lot of the whole details on it, like the decals and the color scheme and things, weirdly remind me of sort of H.R. Giger. You know, in that kind of xenomorph design, it's as if H.R. Giger designed the Enterprise, and and um, again, I don't, I don't hate it. I think it's good. I do like it for the most part. I uh, played uh, around with this ship a lot in Star Trek Online, but again, it's good, but not great. It's not. I'm not a big fan of this kind of aesthetic in general and this kind of uh, design philosophy, so to speak. Uh, next up at number seven, we have the Enterprise B. Um, so the Excelsior class, I, I touched on this recently, um, or will be touching on it recently in my Star Trek retrospective uh, for a search for Spock, but the Excelsior class, I love it. It's one of my favorite ship designs in all of Star Trek and all of sci-fi. I think it looks awesome. And uh, having the Enterprise B be an Excelsior class, I think it makes a lot of sense. However, in Star Trek Generations, uh, I guess they needed to differentiate it from the Excelsior, so they decided to add on this kind of weird, like, bum chin kind of, kind of uh, shape to the bottom of the drive section over the deflector dish and to me it kind of ruins its look really um, the Excelsior is meant to look you know really sleek and powerful and uh, I really love kind of the way the shapes flow into each other and you know it's kind of got these these big sort of chunky sections but when they're all together it still looks like a ship that's really fast and really you know I think just by sticking this weird shape to the bottom of the drive section of the deflector uh, kind of ruins that aesthetic and, and makes it look a little weird and, and just sort of distorts the silhouette and so um, the Enterprise B if it was just a normal Excelsior class it may be higher, it may have been higher on the list, but then again, it's just the Excelsior again. So I can understand the, the desire to alter it to, you know, make it, to differentiate it from the normal Excelsior. But I don't know, maybe there was a way to do it without changing kind of the shape of this section. Maybe if they'd done something to the nacelles, I don't know. Um, but I think just this sticking this weird kind of chin to the drive section was really weird. And so that's why it's kind of lower on the list for me. Next up at number six is the Enterprise Refit from the movies. Now, some uh, may say, you know, how is this not number one or how is it num not number two? And, you know, to be perfectly clear, um, it's a lovely looking ship. It's not bad at all. And this is totally just a personal preference of mine, but I don't like the slim nacelles. Uh, I don't like them being thin instead of the sort of cylindrical structures. I don't like them being kind of a weird kind of distorted rhombus structure with like very thin kind of front profiles. It, to me, it kind of makes the ship look a bit shorter than before. Uh, maybe that's to do with, you know, the, the placement of the pylons because they're further up on the drive section than, than the uh, TOS Enterprise. But yeah, just the way the nacelles look... I prefer different designs to, to, to this. Um, as I said, this ship looks gorgeous in most shots, but when you get to like a front view of it, the nacelles, because they're so thin, um, they just sort of look like two bricks which have been placed on the saucer section. It looks really odd. Um, and I think it's there's a much more aesthetically pleasing design. Uh, I think the TOS design with the more rounded nacelles is a much more aesthetically pleasing um, design. So that's why I'm afraid the refit I place uh, sort of in the middle of the list rather than uh, near the top. And uh, that kind of carries us naturally into number five, which is the TOS Enterprise. And again, uh, some people may immediately say, wait, how is it not higher? And um, yeah, as I said, the reason I uh, prefer this one over the movie refit is because I just prefer the, the rounded nacelles. To me, it just kind of balances the overall profile of the ship. It gives it a better profile. Um, the only reason this is lower 
on the list is because um, it's just not that high fidelity anymore. You know, like a lot of things in the original series, um, it's just aged a bit. And, um, you know, to me, this, you know, as, as nice as the design is and as much as I like it, to me, this sort of, it just looks like a model in most shots, even when it's, you know, redone with CGI and things. It never, it's not convincingly a starship anymore. You know, it just looks like a model, a very nice looking model, but it just doesn't have the kind of fidelity anymore. It's kind of got that, it's a very simplistic design and, uh, you know, it just... It doesn't look as realistic anymore. Yeah, I really enjoy the ship. The Constitution class, I love it. Um, I think it's better than the refit because of the larger nacelles, but just because it's showing its age, I've placed it, uh, you know, not as high on the list. Number four is the Enterprise C. Um, I really like the Ambassador class, and I wish we saw it more. You know, of course, we saw it in um, yesterday's Enterprise, and I think it appears briefly in, like, Redemption Part 2 and some other little odd shots of the next generation, but, you know, I think it's the perfect bridge between the uh, 23rd century era and the TNG uh, 24th century era ships. Um, it's got, like, the Galaxy class's kind of, like look to it. It's, it's the aesthetic, you know, it's got the kind of lo loads of windows and panels and, you know, all that, that that rich detail on the hull, which is really nice. And it's got a kind of a much a similar kind of silhouette to the Galaxy class. But it's just, it has, it retains the shapes of the Constitution class. You know, the saucer section looks very much like um, the Constitution class and so does the drive section with the big rounded deflector. And uh, I just think, it's a really, really smart design, and for a ship which, you know, for all the model makers knew, was only ever going to appear in yesterday's Enterprise, you know, and was mostly used for kind of just the odd ship if they needed it, um, I think it, it was just, it's just such a great design, and, you know, thematically as well with that uh, specific story of yesterday's Enterprise is uh, just the perfect kind of image to evoke, you know, the story and the themes uh, of 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 yesterday's Enterprise and, and where it comes from and, and what its function is in that story. I think it's just a really, really nice design. And um, I'm sad we didn't see more of it, frankly, because, you know, in Deep Space Nine, when we get to the Dominion War, there are heaps of, like, Ex Excelsior classes and Miranda classes being used well into the 24th century. And, you know, I'd, I would have loved to see some more Ambassador class ships show up because even though, you know, the Galaxy class kind of supplanted it, um, I don't think that's any reason not to keep using the Ambassador class, you know, it's still a powerful ship and yeah, I would have just, I would have loved to see more of it. And number three, it's the Kelvin Timeline Enterprise and uh, I know I said I didn't want to be controversial, I know some people hate this ship, but I love it, I really do. Um, the goal of this design, you know, I was reading up on it, uh, was to really merge the uh, the original series Enterprise with the refit design. And I think they really did that perfectly. Um, the hull, kind of the, the overall colour of it and the hull details and things are really, really close to the, the refit design from like the motion picture and so on. But its overall silhouette is much closer to the original series Enterprise, you know. Um, with the bigger nacelles, which of course I, I said before that I liked. Um, I like how the different sections of it, you know, the different modules, like the drive section, the saucer section, and the nacelles and kind of things, they sort of flow into each other more, rather than just kind of looking like they're, they're bolted together. They look like they kind of really... It looks kind of aerodynamic. I know J.J. Abrams, uh, you know, asked the designers to sort of think of the Enterprise if it was a hot rod, and I, to I totally see this, and it's, it has a lot of uh, power to it and a lot of beauty. I just, I just really like the way all the shapes flow together, you know. I do have some quibbles with it. Um, I think the neck joins to the drive section a little bit too far back, but that might be because, you know, the deflector dish is a dish, which is kind of sitting on the end of the uh, drive section rather than being integrated into it. But again, that's kind of a from the TOS era enterprise. Um, so I have those quibbles with it. And yeah, the nacelles are a little bit over-designed. As I said, I do like bigger, chunkier nacelles, but they are a bit odd looking in, in some angles, you know, some of the uh, the shapes in it kind of kind of jut out and bulge out in weird places, but um, overall I think this is a, just a really, really sleek looking, really advanced ship. I know some people sort of refer to this and um, the bridge design is sort of like the Apple Store Enterprise, and I totally see that, but again, Apple products look really nice, so I don't really see how that's, uh, that's a, um, uh, an argument to its detriment. But, um, yeah, I, I really like the Kelvin Timeline Enterprise. I know some people hate it. You know, fair enough, if, that, if, you know, if that's you. But I really think it's great. Um, I've got it as my desktop wallpaper right now. Um, 
yeah, I just think it looks it's really nice. I think it's a really nice update. Number two is the Enterprise D, the Galaxy class. Um, I can only imagine what it was like for Trek fans in the 80s because this is so different. Yeah, it's so different to the Constitution class. You know, we jumped, uh, you know, Star Trek, in terms of design, jumped from the movie Refit, from, you know, the Wrath of Khan and so on and so forth, uh, to the Galaxy class. And it's so, so different. Um, but it's a beautiful ship. It's just beautiful. You know, obviously it retains all the same uh, design elements as uh, the, the original, with, you know, the drive section and the saucer section and the cells and things. But it just, like, changes the shapes around and, and integrates them more, and it's just really beautiful. You know, it's... There's just so much about this design that works. Like, the ship looks massive. It is massive, you know. But at the same time, it looks fast. Like, it looks really aerodynamic and it looks really, you know, graceful. So, like, even though it's huge and it has over a thousand people on it and it could fit even more, um, it just, it looks like it can go, like, shit off a shovel at the same time, you know. It's a really, really cool balance. Um, it looks really, really, like, like grand and luxurious, you know, like some people call it, like, an Epcot Center or, like, a big hotel or something like that. Um, but at the same time, you know, when this thing goes into battle, especially in uh, Deep Space Nine, when you see loads of galaxy classes together, you know, taking on Dominion and Cardassian ships, when it goes into battle, like, it looks properly, like, formidable and, and menacing, and it's like, you don't want to get on the bad side of this ship when it, when it starts throwing down. Um... I just think it's a gorgeous looking ship, you know, as I said, it's, it's beautiful, there's so much about it that works. Um, I've got a canvas of the thing hanging on my wall as I record this. It's a really, really lovely ship. Uh, before number one, uh, I'm going to make some honourable mentions. Uh, first up is the Enterprise design by Gabriel Croner. Now, first, first time I saw this design circulating on Google Images or something, I actually thought this was going to be the Enterprise in the 2009 uh, movie for the longest time. And I was actually kind of thrown off when I, when I was watching the movie, expecting to see this Enterprise and, and got the other version. But um, yeah, this is a really nice update of the TOS Enterprise. It's got some really nice details in the uh, deflector, in the uh, torpedo bay. I love the nacelles, how they're, how they're made. Um, if it was canon, this would easily be like near the top of the list. Uh, but this was just kind of a fan design, which is propped up in uh, lots of beautiful artwork. But yeah, I think this is a really, really lovely um, update of the original ship. And um, it's just a shame it didn't appear in anything, you know. I'd love, it, I'd love it to appear in something one day, because I think it looks great. Um, another one is the uh, Star Trek Online Enterprise, specifically the Odyssey class. Uh, this design has a lot of fans, and it's appeared in some comic books and things, and um, Space Dog did a video about this where... Um, because uh, it appears in a comic book which is supposed to be canon with um, Star Trek Picard, then the Odyssey class might technically be canon with the shows and things, but I don't know. Um, I like it, but I don't love it. It's it's purely because of the neck, the way the saucer section joins to the drive section, the way it's kind of these two struts. That It's just to me that's still a little bit odd. It sort of looks like the drive section sort of hanging underneath the Enterprise rather than being like attached, rather than supporting the Enterprise. Um, it, again, it's purely a personal preference, I mean all of this is, but yeah, it just looks a little bit odd to me. Uh, but the rest of it I really like. Um, I really like how the Odyssey class kind of evokes the Galaxy class. You know, it has that tall ship kind of thing as, a, as opposed to the sort of squished, sleeker look of the Sovereign style. You know, but at the same time, it, it looks as advanced, and it, f it feels like the next logical step after the Sovereign class, which is really nice. So it plays to the strengths of both the Galaxy class and the Sovereign class, and uh, yeah, just aside from that minor quibble with you know the way the saucer section joins to the drive section, I think it's a really nice design. So number one, um, if you've you know, done process of elimination, you know it by now, it's the Discovery Enterprise. Um, while I love the Kelvin timeline design, uh, this, this is like the perfect update to that ship as far as I'm concerned. Um, it borrows bits from the refit, you know, with the um, sort of slanted nacelle pylons and having the torpedo bay there. But it skews closer to the original series design uh, in terms of overall look. Um, I love just so much about this ship. I love uh, how much more detail is given to certain sections, like the windows on the saucer. I'm assuming these are windows to like some kind of big recreation room or something like that, but they look really, really cool when you get those kind of big sort of 
Spielberg like light shafts coming out onto the saucer. It looks really, really nice. I really like the larger impulse engines. They look really nice. Um, the, the torpedo bay being there as well. Uh, I just love how much more detailed the hull is in general. You get a better sense of the scale of the ship just because there's more windows there, you know? Um, I think it looks right at home in its era. You know, it does harken back to the kind of the pulpy kind of, uh, you know, Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers thing, Forbidden Planet uh, type stuff, which inspired, you know, a lot of the production design of the first Star Trek. But it looks, you know, advanced and it looks properly futuristic enough for modern audiences. You know, as I said with the original, the TOS Enterprise, I love it, but it just hasn't aged that well. This for me is like the perfect, this is what I'm looking for, you know, it's the perfect update to that design. I think it's just awesome looking. I can't wait to see it in Strange New Worlds. So that's my ranking of the various Enterprise designs. Now obviously someone will disagree with me, but feel free to put your own rankings uh, in the comments. This is just my personal opinion of course, and my personal preferences. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.